We're going to take a look at how you can improve your block clearance and first two steps. Much research and practical experience shows that at 10 meters you've won or lost the race, 100 meter race, 60 meter race, everything else being equal. So how do you get to 10 meters quicker than your opponent? Now do stick with me as the research involved elite sprinters and compared those to non-elites. The elites had best 100 meter times of 10.27 on average and the non-elites 11.31 seconds on average. And the researchers looked at what made the elite sprinters better on the block clearance step and the first two steps post acceleration. And it's very interesting and tells you a lot. It can indicate what areas you need to work on with your sprinters in order to get them out of the blocks quicker. Now I'm going to take you through the research findings in brief because it's crucial as I've just said so that you're going to understand more about what you can do to improve your sprint start. That 10 meter section of a 100 meter race is vital. At 10 meters when Usain Bolt broke the world record for the first time, his first time when he ran 9.69 seconds in Beijing, he got to 10 meters at a speed of 9.6 meters a second and maxed out further on in the 100 meters at 12.02 meters a second. He was in the lead by about 40 centimeters at 10 meters and as you know from the race he never literally looked back huh, until the end. The researchers stated that a closer horizontal projection of the center of mass in the set position to the starting line and a shorter block time guarantee a maximal block velocity for the sprinter. What exactly does that mean? Well, put simply, it meant that the elite sprinters were able to get their center of mass further forwards in the set position. And this enabled them to, with their superior strength, which I shall talk about later, rate of force development and power move themselves faster out of the blocks and get a longer first step compared to the non-elite. Also relevant, which I shall again focus on later, was the use of their arms. On screen now you can see what the research team specifically considered. There's a lot to it. Now I've left a link so that you can read the complete research survey should you wish in the video description. Now I've indicated that the elite sprinters were able to get their center of mass closer to the finish line i.e. over the start line in the set position and through the first step. Interestingly there was very little difference between the elites and non-elites in terms of reaction time. In fact much research indicates that reaction time is not a measure of a sprinter's ability. So when removing reaction time the researchers found that elite sprinters were faster at 5 meters and 10 meters. The elites got to 10 meters in 1.20 seconds and the non-elites in 1.25 seconds. And showing their superiority the elites reached 10 meters in 1.88 seconds and the non-elites in 1.97 seconds. So what's the importance of having the center of mass closer to the finish line, more over the starting line? Well it means that it doesn't have to travel so far on that first step. So there's an advantage straight away from that position. In terms of specific measurements, if you want that as a reference for coaching your sprinters or for yourself, the elites were five centimeters further forwards, closer to the finish line. The researchers identified that the rear leg in particular had an effect on pushing the center of mass further forwards over the start line and the angle in the elite sprinters was greater than in the non-elite. Most of us will probably tell our athletes or if you're an athlete yourself, a sprinter, that the rear angle should be around about 120 degrees. But that greater angle on the rear block at the knee enabled the center of mass to be further forwards and this ultimately enabled a quicker getaway. Now the researchers also indicated that the elite sprinters were stronger and therefore able to hold a more forward sprint set position compared to the non-elites. I've been playing around with that in training and we've actually been trying to specifically strengthen the shoulder muscles in the set position so that we can get further forwards in the position. It's very simple to do. Get into the set position and shift your body weight center of mass further forwards. 
by at four to five centimeters as indicated. Yes, it's gonna depend on building up more specific strength, perhaps through weight training, but this is a take home message from the research that I think is valuable, that if you can move closer forwards, move your center of mass, then you're gonna get a better start. So the elites had better shoulder power, shoulder strength, and it seems that the shoulders were also important, the arms, for the first two steps, and in particular the first step. The elites were better able to move their arms further forwards and backwards on that first step. That resulted in conjunction with the greater angle on the back leg and the forward center of mass on a quicker and longer first step compared to the non-elites. Now I've explained why the elite sprinters were able to move quicker out of the blocks and exert more force compared to the non-elites and also that the first step was far superior to the non-elites interestingly and paradoxically however there was not so much difference between the second step lengths between the elites and the non-elites now they'd attributed the better first step down to the better arm action of the elites and the ability to move the arms further away on the second step the researchers rather paradoxically discovered that the elite sprinters were less able to recover their arms and their position to get a superior second step or at least one that was percentagely better than the non-elites. In fact they discovered that there was very little difference on the second step length between the non-elites and the elites but bear in mind that the elite sprinters had got there a lot quicker. The researchers attributed the poorer second step amongst the elite sprinters to a inconsistent arm action and one that needed further work, technical work on to improve to make it similar to the first step. So that's something that we as coaches and sprinters need to analyze. We need to look at the way that we move our arms and project our body on the second step in particular. In terms of further practical implications, the researchers identified, and it's not rocket science here, that a specific conditioning regime is needed to improve the first 10 meters of acceleration. And they produced a hierarchy of strength and conditioning means. It's not, as I've indicated, that revelatory. We'll be doing most of that at the moment. The one thing that they did indicate, however, was that resisted training means should be used and sprinting up gradients of about 3%. One thing that I also need to bring up is the length of the first and second steps. And you're gonna see those on screen now. So we can use those as a measure for elites and non-elites. Many of us will be working with sprinters around 11 seconds. So the non-elite measurements may be a starting point for us. We can then try to edge those step lengths closer to the elites over time as we build the relevant strength, power and coordination in order to achieve better clearance. It's all about developing the right muscles as well to be able to hit the positions at speed. Now, if you want to find out more about what are the specific sprint muscles, in particular for maximum velocity, then do check out this video here. For the acceleration phase, the calf muscles are very important as they will stop the heel coming down towards the ground on those first two steps and subsequent steps for that matter. Of the two calf muscles, the soleus has been identified as being the key muscle. In that, that's the one that functions when the knee is bent. And the knee is bent a lot on the first steps of acceleration, which incidentally also have more of a concentric pushing muscular action contribution. So we are working a lot on our calf complex, ankle complex, I should say, in order to bolster the strength in our soleus and the larger gastrocnemius muscle in order to support the body in the first stage of triple extension during the accelerative phase. The research has better enabled me to understand the mechanics of the first couple of steps and set position and that is revelatory in some ways and that now I'm able to make further suggestions on how to correct the starting position so that the athlete is better able to project themselves out at greater force delivery, greater power delivery, and achieve longer steps. Got any questions about this particular video or indeed any of my others, then do leave a comment in the section below or through my other social media.